Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time we're going to have a look on these uh, Wago and the other kind of connectors again. We're going to actually test some of these outside and shove a load of current through and see which fails first, if anything. But uh, before that, a couple of points which were raised on the comments, so just uh, answer those before we actually go outside. Now, someone on the comments did ask about these things, whether they were attracted to a magnet, and we can find out. So here's the uh, actual Wago one on the right here, and this is the other brand on the left, and as we saw before, it's just the fact that one's cut all the way through and the other is not. So uh, here's a magnet here. That one, as you can see, definitely attracted there. And the Wago one, well, as before, it's attracted as well. So they're certainly made of some kind of ferrous material, presumably spring steel or something. But as you can see, they're both uh, attracted to the magnet in the same way. So those are basically the same. Now, another comment was, are these made of the same kind of plastic or not? And I've got the two here. This is the Wago one, obviously, with the uh, Wago marked on. And this is the other one. I've already had a hack at it with the uh, tool here. So we'll just cut this and see if it actually sounds the same. So I'll just try that again then. So again, this is the uh, Wago one first. Let's go on the front there. So that was those two. It's not easy to tell really if there's a huge difference. And uh, if you look at these, the Wago one here does seem to be a bit more smoother type of plastic. This seems to be a bit more sort of granular and possibly scratchy. So maybe uh, some difference in the plastic there, but nothing that's uh, terribly obvious. And as was pointed out in the other video, one of them is actually marked PA66 in the bottom, and the other one is not. But other than that, they look uh, again pretty much the same. Now for the first test we're going to apply a flame to these and see what happens. Now we're doing this outside obviously, unfortunately it's a windy day and also the sun keeps going in and out as well so the lighting might go a bit wrong on some of these but uh, that's just how it is. Now if these things actually burn what should happen is that uh, when the flame's removed they should self-extinguish so uh, just applying the uh, flame there to the Wago one. And we see the plastic's melting there but it's not actually burning or setting on fire bit of smoke coming off but uh, you notice when the uh, flame is removed it basically just uh, solidifies back again and there's no actual burning involved so that seems uh, perfectly acceptable. Now we'll do the same to the uh, Faco brand on the left there and uh, first pressure there it seems to be doing the same thing again so it's just sort of melting, a little bit of smoke coming off but no actual flame or continued burning once the uh, actual flame we're applying is removed. So they seem to be pretty much identical in the way that they actually react and obviously they're melting but of course being like that's with a direct flame on it they're not supporting combustion or carrying on burning after we've removed the actual flame there. And we see uh, a bit of flame in this particular end part here and that's basically the wooden backing being charred and actually burning. It's not actually the uh, things themselves doing it but even with that again once we take the uh, flame away it doesn't actually continue burning away there. So that seems pretty successful, and they react in the way you'd expect, and they both react in pretty much the exact same way. Now for the next test we're doing uh, the current, and what we've got here is two connectors there. We've got the uh, Wago on the left and the uh, questionable other brand on the right, so a little W and a question mark above it. Clamp meter there on the left just to show what current we're actually shoving through. And the wires here are 2.5 square millimetres, and these are copper. They did have insulation on, but I've removed all the insulation because we don't want that burning off and uh, obscuring the result. And I've put two pieces into each connector. So we've got the equivalent of 5 square millimetres going in and coming out. And as the winding series, the same current will go through both. And I've got a timer here at the bottom left just so we can see how long this uh, test goes on for. Now these connectors are rated 24 amps in this configuration with the 2.5 square millimetre wire. They can do up to 32 
but that's only if you're using four square millimetre wire, and that has to be stranded wire. And I don't have any of that, so we're just using the uh, 2.5 here at the moment. So power's now turned on, and we see the current there is about 23.5 amps or so. This is uh, basically at the rating of these devices, so you wouldn't expect anything to happen in this configuration. So just using that as a convenient starting point. So now I've cranked up the current to the next level, which is about 38 amps in this case. Now that represents quite a significant overload for these connectors. So we'll leave it running a bit and see uh, if anything happens. So about two and a half minutes in now, and nothing's happening there, so turning up the current even more. So now we're running at around uh, 55 or so amps, or just slightly lower. And again, we'll just leave this running and see what, if anything, actually happens. Now, bearing in mind, the wires here, in theory, are rated about 26 amps each, so even though they're running about 55 amps, that's still actually within the rating of the wires. And you see they're not particularly discoloured or even uh, showing any signs of overheating yet, so no problem there. And the connectors as well, again, nothing uh, visibly changed either. So here at the four minute marks, and uh, nothing visibly changed at all. So we'll turn on the current again to the next level, which uh, is about 73 or 74 amps or so. Now it's five minutes, and again, nothing visibly changed. So uh, let's turn the current up again. We'll turn up a few uh, notches at once here, because uh, we need to actually get something to happen. So uh, current now is around 115 amps. And bearing in mind, this is a massive overload compared to the uh, 24 or whatever it's supposed to be rated at with these wires. But uh, as you can see, there's no sort of dramatic failures or flames or whatever coming out of it, so we'll uh, leave it going and uh, again come back in a few moments and see what's happened. So now just after eight minutes, uh, current's still about 115 amps, and you see the wires are starting to discolour in various areas. The sort of different uh, golden and silvery bits are showing on the various parts there. Notable on the right there, we've got a bit of silver showing on that uh, right-hand connector. So uh, it's certainly getting uh, rather hot over there. I think we'll just turn up the current again now to the uh, next level, and this is pretty much as high as this thing will go. It's uh, about 150 odd amps there, so uh, hopefully something will happen this time, and we'll just keep leaving it on until uh, something actually melts or fails. So this is nine minutes, and uh, the right-hand connector is starting to melt, and it's not particularly uh, visible there, a bit of smoke coming out, and it is starting to move slightly as the plastic obviously gets soft and starts to deteriorate, and that's the uh, Faco brand. The uh, Wago one on the left uh, doesn't look any different at all, so that's uh, pretty much how we started. And you note that pretty much all the wires now have discoloured in various areas with different colours of sort of purple and silver and various orangey bits uh, showing through. So that connector over on the right is definitely getting extremely hot. You see it's sort of sagging down considerably, and there's a lump of molten plastic showing on the top of it. smoke obviously appearing from within the connector there. Current still at this 150 amps, which bearing in mind even at the 30 chart rating is still five times more than it was actually rated for, so not too surprising that things are starting to fail. And there we see the connector has actually completely melted off of the uh, terminals inside. But notable that the terminals are still holding, and the current is still about 152 amps, so nothing actually has failed there. It's just that they've obviously got rather hot, and basically melted off the uh, plastic covering around them. Now we can see the smoke there pouring away from the connectors, which is just basically smoking away the remains of the plastic. So just uh, well after 11 minutes now, so uh, that's pretty much I think, all that's going to be uh, seeing there, so we'll uh, cut off the current there and actually just disconnect the uh, wiring completely and allow this to cool. And we can see there that the uh, Wago one on the left has actually melted somewhat. See the bit of bubbling of plastic around the edge, so that certainly hasn't escaped uh, without any problem. But again, this is 150 odd amps, five or six times more than these things are rated to, so not really surprising that they have failed. And you'll also notice the actual wires themselves are getting extremely hot as well due to the various discolorations on pretty much the entire surface of them. Now this is what's left uh, after the uh, wreckage there. And this is the uh, FACO connector. And as you see it has melted completely off of the terminals, although the terminals are still intact, they're still 
two wires are still in there. The uh, Wago one has fared slightly better, but of course it has still melted significantly, so it's completely unusable and destroyed. So, uh, although it's uh, better, it's certainly not uh, damage free. Bearing in mind though, this was at 150 odd amps, five times or more than the things are actually rated for. And you can see the copper wire has gone various different shades due to the uh, reaction with the oxygen in the air. And uh, so this is 2.5 millimetres, so we had two of those, and it was equivalent of five square millimetre wire actually feeding both of those. And did that so the weak point was obviously the connectors themselves. So uh, yes, that one is slightly worse, but not by much. And this one obviously melted, and bearing in mind we had to get to ridiculously high currents before we saw any kind of melting or overheating there. So in terms of operation, they uh, certainly seem to be pretty much equivalent, although this one's say, slightly more uh, overheating there once we got to the very high current level. Now in terms of actually buying these things, uh, although you can obviously buy these ones uh, from various places, if you're buying them in the UK, as they say, tool stations sell these, they are selling them for pretty much the same price as the actual Wago ones anyhow, so I don't really see much point in buying these uh, other ones because they're pretty much the same price anyway. Maybe if you bought a big pile from China or something they might be uh, fractionally less, but that's kind of going to apply if you're going to buy sort of thousands of them. If you're going to buy a small quantity then uh, probably not going to be a huge amount of difference in the price either. And bearing in mind these are not sort of uh, thousands of pounds each or anything, they're relatively cheap items anyway. So uh, that's pretty much that, and I say it's pretty much well uh, stuck onto the uh, wires there, and even if we go in there and try and sort of wrench it off there, it's uh, still pretty well attached to the wires. We've got to basically break things apart before it obviously detaches from those. And the uh, Wago one here, well, that's kind of sort of just melted and congealed onto the uh, wires anyhow, and you see there's the back, it's sort of uh, starting to melt through there. So uh, that's pretty much all we're going to do with these things. The other thing I mentioned here, someone in the comments did put on that uh, they're not very good for testing. Well, they are because this hole here is where you put your test probe in to uh, obviously check whether it's uh, live or whatever, so already built in there. So uh, that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.